Hello, friends. Meister here bringing you another episode of my favorite podcast. Today, we're doing it special style. We got not one, but two guests. I've had them on 11 billion times. If you don't know them by now, I'm like, do you actually listen to this podcast? I think I've had them on, I don't know, six times. I don't know at this point. But every year, either at the end of the year or the beginning of the year, I bring them on. We talk a little bit about goal setting and achieving your goals and things like that. Um, but in the past few years, I think it's just kind of become a conversation that I look forward to just to catch up and to share with you folks that are listening, two people that I really respect and admire and who are actually living their best life. We've gotten to watch them and kind of like grow up with them as they build their, built their best life. And now they are in the freezing cold. They have 19 animals and <laughs> I think maybe what, like 13 bikes at this point, they do all of the sports and we really get to see people just living their best life. So every year I'm excited for this talk. It's happening. The day this drops, the day that you're listening to this or watching this, I have no idea. It may be Christmas. It might be the last day of the year. I don't know. But either way, welcome back to the show, my good friends, Meredith and Alex. Welcome, you two. Hello. We had a, a little bit of an adventure before getting the tech set up, but it's good. We're all here and everything's going to work out. So we're going to make it fun right off the bat, borrowing this from what you folks did. And we're going to do kind of the flash round, this or that, this ask you some questions real fast. Okay. Excellent. Easy. All right. Let's pass this over to Alex because Alex is nervous right now because the mic wasn't working. The camera was fucked up. We couldn't have some. I'm not nervous. <laughs> I'm hurt. Oh. <laughs> It's great when you're in a relationship with your business partner until something goes wrong. This, yes, yes. You can ask lots of Especially when the something is technology and I'm like, I could use some help. And Except you like, didn't even ask that. So, but just, we won't get into it now. It's a conversation that Meredith can look forward to after this podcast. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> I love this. I love this. So actually, I'm concerned. I'm, I'm. I can hear Alex, but I'm looking at the thing. Are you looking at that as well, M Meredith? And I'm like, is it actually recording any sound? It's all coming through my computer because the mixer okay. goes through mine. Got it. So Alex it's going to show Alex is just... muted. Yep. Okay. Got it. I'm like, wait a minute. I can hear you, but why is it not? Love it. Amazing. Technology. Okay. Let's do this. We're going to jump, jump right on him. Alex, question for you. Doc Martens or... Pleated pants. Which would you rather wear? Um, so I feel like this is a trick question. No, no. Did you ask me this because you knew that I wouldn't know what pleated pants are? What? We've oh, gone... my God. <laughs> First, we didn't know what Doc Martens were. I was like, she'll for sure know Doc Martens. I know. I was like, yes, I know that one. You know, pleated pants, they have like, they like, sort of bunch in the front and it creates a crease all the way down the pant like suit pants are sometimes that way look at alex so where the no, answer like a, then is has to be like from buttons. ironing <laughs> it's got to be no they don't need to be ironed <laughs> that's the way they look yeah i would say pleated pants oh wow Wow, you don't even know what they are. Can I just look? Can I look? Am I allowed to use outside resources Absolutely. here? Yeah, just don't. Is this use like a test? Tab. I'm worried that the computer is going to shut down. But pleated I'll allow pants. It, oh, they're like wide there. leg. We're talking wide leg. Really, it's the top part of it that yeah. is where you're going to see the pleat. I have pants like this. No, I had. Don't. Yeah, those white ones that I was going to wear for the wedding, but didn't. I thought those were flat front. No, they, I think they have a pleat. Okay, well, there you I go. I still think pleated pants. Pleated. Like I can, I can pull off a good trouser. I love this. And we call it a trouser. Love this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this I is off this. to a good start. I love this. I love this. All right. Meredith, top bunk or bottom bunk? Oh, bottom bunk. Only because I had the top bunk in college and fell off. There was no safety rail? I took it off. Okay, well. There we go. I don't on know brand. why I took it <laughs> on brand. Like, yeah. What? Okay. Okay. Alex, as it relates to the, let me ask this. Do you have a dishwasher? Yes. Okay. I don't know. As it relates to the dishwasher, organized or organized chaos? Organized. 
Meredith, same question for you. Organized, but in a different way. Oh, do we fight about this? Yeah. No, we don't anymore. Cause I have, I have adopted radical acceptance when it comes to the dishwasher. And I, even though I've told her how I like it and it's important to me, she refuses to like know how to do it or do it the way I want it done. So I just, it's one of those things I let go. I don't, if it were up to me, I wouldn't like delineate between big plates and little plates because you can theoretically go like big plate, little plate. It's harder to unload. Big plate, little plate. There's no, there's a reason behind it. It's easier to unload it when all the plates are the same size and they're all in the a row because you can just grab like four at once or you just go in there with like your fingies like i'm gonna get like (laughs) do you separate the silverware no no really wow do you of course i I have actually i have to say i I I I put the plates in by size although lex is a lot more now but when i was doing it living alone they went in by size because it was easier to pull out Mm -hmm. like but then the i also have to have the silverware separated because the same reason i just take it out and put it in the drawer. I like that idea. It's I'm going to adopt bit that. More time on the front end to be like, put the forks in this way. Mm-hmm. Well, mm. that's like the argument. Like, if you, so when I take off pants, sometimes I just I pull them off and they're inside out. Mm. And then, so Alex wants me to right side out them. Alex, who does all the laundry in the house, you forgot that part. But they doesn't, <laughs> if it's like yoga pants, it doesn't matter. You can fold them inside out. And I do. And then I just right side out them when I put them on. Okay. It doesn't matter to Meredith, me. Meredith, what if one leg is inside out <laughs> and one leg is right side out, which happens often? What do you want me to fold them like that? <laughs> yes. I don't do that that often. It happens. Okay, More well, often than you What realize. about for t-shirts? I have this argument with myself. I do my laundry, but it's annoying to right side them, but then I don't know what the fuck the t-shirt is. And I'm like, I should have done this. I should have exactly. right sided it. Cause they're all black. I think that depends on like how you take the t-shirt off, you know, like, cause some people do the like behind the back, pull oh, it off over lot. the head it's and that's inside stretched out. out. I don't know about that. I know I do a, like you, sh- you get the arms up and then you take it off and then it's Are you right. Stretching the out. neck hole out. Meredith, Are you stretching I don't know. The neck hole? I get probably. Did an arm come out of the neck like that? <laughs> <laughs> Did the arms go in and then it. Wow. But also the arms go out. See, I wear t-shirts so that are like at least twice the size, like two times bigger than I need. So mm. it doesn't matter you how mm-hmm. you take it off. There's so much space that's basically falling off. Yeah, It's ready to come off when you just, you turn upside down and slides right off. Mm. That's actually so, how Alex gets her shirt off like, the handstand holes. You're telling me, you're telling me that you, <laughs> yeah. you load the dishwasher in an organized fashion, but you fold your t-shirts inside no, out. No, I, un- I the take drawer. them and fold, mm-hmm. they have to. I have oh, to. Okay. I'm so. My question was like, when do I right side them? When I take them off, mm. versus when mm-hmm. I when I've done the laundry, and I well, do it when I've done the laundry. A lot of people. There are people out there who who think that you should wash your clothes inside out, especially if there's anything printed or mm. like jeans, because it protects the outside yeah. of the garment. So mm-hmm. I go back and forth with that. So with jeans, if you're like, oh, I don't want them to bleed, yes. With you, and I'm thinking about your sweatshirts because I'm, I went and got the same one. The nice stuff is on the inside, the nice material. Mm. And I'm always like, if I put that on the outside, because I don't separate That's my clothes either. I'm like, it's all going to the same place. I don't know how you feel about that, but it all, I put it all together. And then I'm like, oh, but the nice stuff's getting real rough. Yeah. So I, can, get, I yeah. can go either way with that. And then sometimes I'm like, I don't, whatever, I don't care. It's going in. Learning so much about you. <laughs> Learning so yeah. much. Uh, Alex, email or phone call? Email. Next question, follow up. Email or, t- oh, excuse me, phone call or text message? Uh, usually text. And if I do phone, it's like, can I phone you in text before the call? I don't like cold calling. Yeah. And I don't, I don't like when people cold call me. It's immediately no. When you go from text and then suddenly you get a voice. That's actually the question for Meredith. Meredith, yay or nay to voice messages? Uh, it depends on the person. I like them they're easy to listen to if I'm driving, but like if all of my clients sent me voice memos, that would make an, a, a possible situation for me. Yes. So I go text. Yes. 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 Next question. Meredith, stay with you. Calgary or Fernie? Oh, Fernie, for sure. It's not quite, I'm going to try to make it easier, right? I don't want any decisiveness there or division, <laughs> divisiveness. That's the word. Um, Alex, did you watch Stranger Things? Do you know what that is? No, we watched like episode one and I was like, oh, is this like a, 
is this a horror series? I don't like horror movies. So I was like, nah, I'll skip it. (sighs) I'm also not a fantasy person. So I had, it had like fantasy horror ish vibes. So I was like, eh, it's okay. Let's just go back and watch watch the L word again. (laughs) Cool. I'm going to ask a question about that. Uh, but question from this, and I'm going to ask you as well, Meredith. In Stranger Things, there you have to have a song. There's a song that's required in order to like wake this person, wake someone up when they've been. They're in this like this bad guy is in it, and you get in this kind of like hypnotized state. But music can pull you out of that. Right? It has to be your favorite song, one song, and it can pull you out of that trance and save your life. What song, Alex? Would that be? And who sings it? <laughs> She'd be like, pick it by Mel C. <laughs> I'm changing my answer. Um, oh, geez. I'm just not a music person at all. Can I just, can I just look on, on uh, Spotify quickly? So, yeah, Alex is, you're, you're wrapped for 2023. Yeah. Just come circle back. We'll circle back. We'll circle back. <laughs> Meredith, mm-hmm. what is your savior song from if you were on Stranger Things? Probably Silver Springs by Fleetwood Mac. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Respect. I like it. Yeah. That's such a like, that's such a vibe. Because it's like an angry woman song. Look at it's it, like she's casting a spell through a song i i feel like that about a lot of my first exposure to uh to fleetwood mac was during college and just one of the older girls on the on the soccer team not, not even one a few of them i listened to it and i was just like i just felt like all the songs were a vibe like i just when i think fleetwood mac i think chimes and i'm just like mm-hmm. in the song all of it i actually yeah. am a big fan of the music so yeah i'm i like that i like that Okay, Alex, do we- I have my answer. And it's not like my favorite song ever because I don't have one of those, but like right now it's something I really enjoy listening to and it's Mona Lisa's and Mad Hatter's, but not by Elton John. It's by Marin Morris. Wow. That's a, yeah, it's really what, good. How did you even hear this song? It just came up and Meredith and I were both in the gym. We're like, what is this? Came on. You like recognize the song because it's an Elton John song, but you're like, that that's Marin Morris singing Elton John. It's a good it's a good version of that song. Wow. Okay, Alex with the uh was not was not expecting that. Okay. From the back row. <laughs> right? Like <laughs> what? Oh, okay. Okay. Uh Alex back to you since you brought this up. Favorite L word character. Bet. What? Look at Meredith's face. Oh yeah. <laughs> What? She's got it for bet. Bet. Can I just can you just maybe give a sentence or two as to why? Not justifying it. I just want to know more. She's just like wow. Herself. She's like powerful. She just like kind of and I don't want to like condone the cheating that she yeah, does yeah, on the yeah. show, but it's like yeah. she does what she wants and she goes after what she wants and like she's yeah. just and she's passionate and like She'll, she like throws you around. Yeah. And then yeah. yells, always yelling. Yeah. Always yelling. Yeah. She's passionate. Always so I'm like, oh, I like Bet. And I just, she's obviously very attractive. And also, the only thing I don't like about her is how attracted she is to Tina. Cause I'm like, you don't like Tina. I, Tina. Really? Maybe you don't like Tina because you like Bet. Yeah. I could, uh, could yeah, be jealous. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, God, oh, fucking competition. Get out of here. The worst. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Did not expect that one. Cool. Meredith. Do you have a favorite character? Um, I like Dana too. We all liked I mean, Dana. We all yeah, like. We Dana. all like Dana. We all. That was Dana. a mistake. It was big yeah. mistake. That was like Carrie Russell cutting her hair mistake. Like, oh, what? Yeah. What are you what doing? What did you do? What, what is going on here? Big mistake. Yeah. Because then they kept trying to like bring Dana back right? into the fold, and, and I'm like, like you just, just shouldn't have killed her off. Exactly. Why'd you kill her? Yeah. Agreed. Um, I like Molly. Uh yes. Hmm. Yes big molly fan yeah and she was only in there for like a Five season seconds, or two but still but yeah big molly fan yep so none of us like jenny oh my god no she's the worst. 
She was yeah. worse. Awful. I got she, excited she the last season. They're it. like, oh, she dies. But then she's in it the whole fucking season. And you're like, oh, wait, she didn't actually die till the end. So sorry. Yeah. Spoiler yeah. for anyone listening for to this. But it doesn't matter anyway because she's in it the whole fucking time. Yeah. You don't get a Jenny free season no. until the new generation, which isn't as good. Dude. Jenny bad. just gets worse and worse and worse. That. What do we think of the new generation? <sighs> I like the parts with the old cast. Same. <laughs> right? I like the old show. <laughs> yeah. <me> yeah. <laughs> I like Danny. I like um, G. Is it Gigi? Yeah. I like Gigi. I like Gigi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking dead. <laughs> also, you have a type. Yeah. Gigi looks like Bet. Yeah. You the remember when vibe. like Gigi and Bet were getting yeah. together and it was just like two alpha? It was. It was. Alex, <laughs> Alex was like... <laughs> literally i was like pick your get yourself together i was just like pressing myself into the couch like there's a lot of energy going somewhere but i have to stay still she's like is this an imax movie this seems like a lot this is amazing this is amazing then they just got rid of gigi Mm -hmm. they just had a car crash and then she was gone and i was like what yeah not good not good hmm. okay i love it what did you think of the of of uh the generation x or whatever meredith um overall overall i would give it like a c it just made me want it to be a new version of the original oh. I, I don't know. know yeah that show i remember Folks listening to this, I know. I told you I brought him on just to catch up. So just stay with us because this is – <laughs> honestly, though, I already know this stuff tends to do, quote, unquote, better because it's just like this is life and friends shooting the shit. We'll get into the other stuff. Uh, but I will say that show was iconic. And I understand yeah. the first one was problematic in terms of representation, but at the same time, it was also the most representation ever. It just wasn't like diversity. But that show was iconic. I remember I was in college. I was going to be a freshman. And they, like, posted that the show was coming out. And it was just like, how do we watch this? Who has Showtime? We're all poor. Like, let's figure this out. How are we going to watch this show? Like, and somehow the track house had it, which I don't – I still to this day don't know how they had it. But then also it being kind of awkward because you're, like, in this track house. And you're like, well, this scene is a lot for these people. I don't know that I'm just hanging out with them. But still iconic that show and just i i've yet to see another show like it like, no i watched i watched it in secret yeah how did I'm you sure watch a it? lot of people did uh i think it was like so i was in i was a freshman in college too or no i was i was a sophomore when i started watching it so i was then i was in my second year and i watched it like from the internet i don't like when um, you watch, you know how you used to watch shows like on those websites this? that you were like, mm, is this going to give my computer a virus? Yes. Mm-hmm. But I was like, it's worth it. It's definitely, definitely worth I, it. I watched it in secret while I was married. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the trump look, card. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Look at that. I'm just going to throw this out there and this maybe spoil somebody's game out there. But if you're ever talking to a woman and she says she's straight, but she then says, hey, I'm watching the L word. She's not straight. I'm just throwing it no. out there. It's yeah. just, it's a fact. She's it's been my straight for now. For now. <laughs> but it's not. It's like, that is a, yeah. that is like a, I'm trying to think of the word. That is like a, haven't figured it out yet code for mm-hmm. haven't figured it out yet. They're like, hey, I'm it's watching like, Just this give show. that the time it takes to watch six seasons of a show. And check back in with that person and watch them binge it though. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I, wa- I watched it in a week. Like, okay, well, got it. Huh. I didn't sleep. <laughs> I love this. I love this. So, those are all the the flash round questions I have. I didn't even at all. I didn't have anything written down about L word, uh, but I love that segue and all of it that came up, uh, and the discussion we kind of just had about kind of representation. And the fact that a show like that hasn't come back since. I wasn't planning on talking about this, but let's do it. Let's jump in. How has it been? And and Alex, you can go first. 
how has it been being out in all senses of the word, like running the business with your wife? Uh, you know, we can take it back to being at the games as a couple. Like to me, or being at regionals. Like to me, that is just such a poignant moment. Of like, I've never seen that happen again in sports. Beach volleyball side, Larissa and Lily play on the same team. They're they're partners, but I've never seen people going head to head. How has it been being out? For me, like uh, from as a person, I changed a lot when I came out. I was like a very like shut off like uh I didn't really I didn't really let anybody in I wasn't a very open person growing up like in as a teenager and it wasn't so much that it was like being in the closet about my sexuality kind of like in like impacted every other aspect of my life like I felt like I was closed off with a lot of other things as well totally. I don't know if it was like a protective measure or something I just didn't want people to know but as soon as I came out of the closet it kind of just like really helped me be open about everything. Um, and just like, and I think that coincided with just like accepting who I was and like all aspects and then just living that life. And like, you know, we, we've talked about how when you're gay, you're constantly coming out. Like you, you know, you go and you check in at a hotel room and they they look at you and they're like, Oh, like, you know, Meredith checks in and it's one King. And then they look at me and they're like, are you looking to check in as well? Oh. And so, you know, but it, maybe it would be assumed if I was a man that I would be her husband and it's like, we're together. Um, and you, you know, we're together or like a, one King is that, and you're like, yep. Um, there's like little things like yeah. that, that. You just, you kind of get used to, I think I'm a little bit less sensitive to it now. It's just kind of part of it. But I would say, I mean, I'm, I can't imagine being, I never imagined being this happy, but I never imagined getting married to somebody that I love because for a long time when I was in the closet, I didn't come out till I was 26. I imagined like, just like almost telling myself, like, it will be okay. I'll just, you know, marry a man and like, I can love someone that way and it will be fine. But like, I think deep down, I knew that wouldn't make me happy. And it just got to a point where I'm like, I can't keep doing this. It started like I was starting to date people in secret and stuff. And then I was like, okay, I just, this isn't the way I want to live my life. Um, and then of course, like meeting Meredith was one of the best things ever because it, it's like, she's my best friend. She's somebody I like spending every day and all of my time with. So I love working with her. And I think it, it just took a little bit of time to understand how to work together productively. And I think with any partner, business partner relationship that has to happen naturally, but yeah. when you're partners in other aspects of your life as well, there's a little bit more that you have to suss out over time. And somebody asked us the other day, like, oh, how is it working together? And I was like, it's awesome. We're a power couple. I like we figured, we have it figured out. And like, yeah, there are moments like yeah. right before this podcast where we're like, you know, she's treating me like, you know, she wouldn't treat her coworker like this. Um, but at the same time, I think that that makes us a little bit more powerful, that there's a little bit less um, censorship. I try to think of it like that when I'm not treated the way I want to be treated because it goes both ways. So to answer your question, um, it's great. I, I feel for people who feel like they can't come out um, because it nothing beats being able to live who you are in like your full expression. Um, yeah. Meredith. Um, yeah, I mean, we recorded a podcast not too long ago where Alex said, I think we're peaking. And, um, you know, I think she said, I think, I think we've peaked. And I was like, well, speak for yourself. I am, I am peaking and I continue to con continue peaking for a long time. She's at the top, but the top also keeps going. She keeps getting higher than the peak. That's exactly. what she's saying. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's so much of who I am and who we are. It's hard to actually, like, I mean, I obviously had a whole life before coming out, like literally, like mm -hmm. I was on a path. Um, and it's hard to even like th think about that and remember it. And it, it feels, um, really foreign at this point. Um, you know, but for me, it's just being authentic and being happy and, you know, getting to work together is icing on the cake. Cause I know a lot of people don't get to work together and it's, you know, sometimes we spend time with friends, where one person goes off to the office and they don't see each other for like yeah. 12 hours. 
was like, that is so weird to me. I feel like that. Even though I know it's totally people. normal. Like yeah, people probably. have like about Jill, like her boyfriend is a firefighter. So anyone that has that kind of shift work like that, like he'd be gone for like two days. Yeah. I mean, my sister's like, husband is a, a firefighter and that's their life. And they have two kids. Wow. That part. Wow. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. That's a lot. It is a lot. But no, I love it. I mean, it's, you know, obviously I wish that as a country we were a little further along. Like, I feel like we've gone backwards um, in a few different ways, big yeah. ways. I mean, we were looking at a vacation in Florida and what? Like we, well, it, there's like a music festival okay. that we are, are doing very interested in there? yeah so but we didn't like yeah. we, we're not going because it's florida totally. and i have no interest in being in that mm. state totally i'm like no nope. mm -hmm. nope meredith i want to keep asking because alex was kind of talking about this because i experienced the same thing where i think about it with volleyball i definitely am more short-tempered with lex than i am with anybody else in, on the court and Alex yeah. is, was alluding to that, that the same thing happens in your relationship. And she was like, she would not say this to a coworker. What do you think that is? Uh, I mean, I think that's just relationships. Like, I mean, I, it's not a good thing, but I, I do think that often our partners like bear the brunt of frustration and, you know, we, we don't always treat them the same way that we would treat other people. And it's, it's all like, I think it, it kind of comes down to like rip, like repercussions, like you know what you can get away with with your partner versus like if you you treated a coworker or a stranger like that, they would be appalled. Yeah, which kind of makes it appalling that you <laughs> you do treat your partner that way sometimes. Oh. But you know, I they get the best and the worst of you, and I think that especially when you work together, it's you know they see it all. Like I'm a person who if I get frustrated and my daily life, like I would just like to blow off steam by myself. But mm -hmm. when we, because we work together and we're around each other all the time, that happens when I'm with yeah, Alex. That. And so it's, it's, it's just like, she's having a tough day at work and I'm like, I have no idea. <clears throat> and she, I'm like, Hey, what do you want for dinner tonight? Yeah. And like, that just is like the, the straw that broke the camel's <laughs> back. But at the same time, I, a funny story. I remember hanging out with Meredith and her sister and I was like, Meredith is like the most patient person I know. And Megan literally like laughed out loud, like cackled and was like, oh my God, like she's only like that with you. She's like one of the most impatient people that I know. And I had worst. no idea that it was just me that was getting this like special treatment. Um, it, I don't get as much special treatment, <laughs> but I also realized that like the amount of time we spend together, she's actually very patient with me. And there's like, you know, a couple times a week where it's like, okay, she's getting a little impatient. So I can't hold that against her as much. Meredith and I. And usually same. I'm like, hey, say sorry. Yeah. And she's like, oh, sorry. We are the same. You get the best. <laughs> that's a great way to say it. You get the best and also the worst. I will yeah. say from an outsider's perspective and watching you as a couple, definitely a power couple. That goes without saying. But if I pull on that word peaking, it's been really cool to see and the things that you two, uh, I'll just say maybe are are willing to undertake and the way that you're showing up and the, you know, showing up unapologetically as yourselves and leaning into all of this and even something as simple as creating those like running hats. Like that is something that is, there's a message around the message. There's a story around the story there of like, we like this and we're going to make this and... We're not concerned with like, is this the trending thing? Is this like a dad hat, which is like what, you know, is basic and people want. You're like, we're, no, like this is us mm -hmm. and this is our brand. And you do watching you do these things together. It's, it's awesome. It's been really, really awesome. Really awesome to see. So everything that you said about, you know, showing up authentically and stepping into yourselves, like it shows, it shows a million percent from the outside. And I'm just like, eh, now bring back regionals. I, I think it actually helped that we both exited the competitive side of CrossFit and it allowed us to really like stop going against even though we supported each other. It was obviously a complicated yeah. time. We support each other, but we were one, like one against one. Yeah. And as soon as that stopped, it was like, okay, that can be done. Like that part of our relationship is like behind us. Now we're like, we're together and we're working towards the same thing on the same team rather than being against each other. And like, even in training, we kind of diverged on some of our goals and, and that's been 
a relief as well. It so is. Meredith, yeah. I'm pushing this to you because I actually texted Meredith um, before Lex and I started dating. I texted Meredith and I was like, I have a question because <laughs> I am. I don't want to say I will throw out and say that I'm competitive, but it's not actually that I'm competitive. It's like I want to be the best. And there's a little bit of a difference. Uh, but I knew that, you know, Lex is coming to play volleyball. And I was like, is this going to be a problem? Because we do the same thing, right? It's not even like, oh, we're doing such two separate things. Like, we're just the exact same thing. And we're like competing head to head. And I texted Meredith and I was like, can you tell me more? Slash tell me it's going to be okay. <laughs> How has that been, Meredith? And the transition and is there still, you know, competition? Like you did a post a story the other day when you're like, Alex lifted 225 and then you're like, whatever it was, a zillion pounds in my mind. And you're like, and then I did it for 10. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think when you're a competitive person and you hold yourself to really high standards and the things that you do, like that, that doesn't, you can't just flip a switch and turn that off. So it's like, it gets redirected. You kind of, you want to work and hope that you have healthy outlets for that to be redirected into. And I think that that has, and the fact that we, we both still do, Alex is obviously phenomenal at running and, you know, I compete in my training every day pretty much. Um, But the fact that we still have outlets kind of, it gives us a way to not focus it in on ourselves um, and competing like specifically head to head. So even like in sport, you know, with, with volleyball or if we were both doing the same thing, like maybe we're trying to improve in different ways or, um, you know, it's, you, you want to find a way to take that competitiveness and put it to actual like productive use versus like, I just want to be better than Alex or, you know, better than Lex for no real reason other than that. Like, you're just a very competitive person. <laughs> like, it's not going to get me anywhere. Yeah. Well. Did you feel any of that, Alex? Uh, yeah. I think there's, like, there was a level of, like, immaturity in our relationship for a while. And as soon as we kind of got over ourselves, uh, that just is where the magic started happening, I think. It's like a, like, like Meredith said, it's a, it doesn't just go away. So, I mean, I like that word of redirection. And I, I feel like it's also just like a time thing there. I like that you said like maturing, not necessarily that it was necessarily immature, but just maturing. Like, cause it's like, it's how you start off. It's how you are. It's what, what has underpinned so much of your success is being like that. So then to be like, be different, probably not, but can yeah. we redirect? Yeah. So that is, in mind, because I do have a few things written down from the the business side of things. Uh, Meredith, pass it to you first. You have taken on a few different uh, journeys. I don't know what we'll say, projects. And the business is really expanding. You have the run club. You're doing the um, programming. And you are going to be leaning into in-person events. How is this growth going? How is it feeling? Um, It's good. So the, the run club was kind of born from Alex's interest in that. And then that sort of spurred and ignited the first in-person event. Um, So that was all really organic. And so it, it came from a place of like, we're already doing this and then, okay, well, we're getting people together in Philly. So why not get a lot of people together in Philly? And so it all just sort of like fell into line um, and happened on a timeline that made a lot of sense for that type of event. And then almost like this, the same thing for programming and for the fitness sort of sister company to Tactic Nutrition, really, I mean, since we launched this, like, you know, our nutrition company back in 2018, people just ask, what should I do for training? What should I do for training? So from a business standpoint, like people are telling you, like, they have this need, they have this desire, they have this question, which is basically like, that's what you want to make a business to do like they're asking for it just give it to them Mm -hmm. um so for us it was about creating something that was really high quality on brand has a a high quality feel to it um that was also that is also effective and progressive and all the things that matter to us from a training standpoint um and just kind of letting it go i mean the cool thing about that is it's it's a low cost program which is very different than our one-on-one coaching and so it's just, it's going to reach the market and it's going to reach our followers in a different way. And it solves a totally new problem. Totally. So there's also the potential for a lot of overlap. Like we have P 
people we're calling it like the the trifecta or the quadfecta like people who are one-on-one -on -one nutrition clients they're run club members they're doing the fitness program and then they're maybe also doing our habits challenge that's going on right now so and they're like, wearing apparel <laughs> yeah i don't know pent fecta is that a thing <laughs> yes it is now we made it yeah so it's it's creating like we have a, a core group of people who are really like super fans of what we're doing totally. so it's like anything that we put out they do and it's it's awesome when you can also put out really high quality products and programs that add value and it's not just like we're not just out there trying to get in people's pockets which is oh. has never been our mission um the mission is to make people's lives better solve their problems and provide an opportunity to connect with us or you know people in our community so i want to point out folks a few things just from like let's put on our business hats because that's the largely what the podcast talks about uh that's five years from from the start to this kind of branching off into um a, an additional service even though it's a related service one of the things i see happen is people don't do this from the jump and they there's no focus there and people don't know what exactly you do they haven't broken to the trust barrier and it's just your attention is split so they went in and doubled down on this new on tactic as a nutrition company and it's been five years right so 2023 now they're launching the fitness side of it even though there was the demand which is the second thing i want to point out is wait to create wait for what the demand wait for people to be asking and asking not like one people more than one people needs to be asking for this thing <laughs> so we're waiting for that demand to be there and then we can say okay this makes sense and we have everything in, in place where like their nutrition side of the business is running. They're not like trying to like get it together and like filling, figuring things out. That's running well. And then we can, you know, almost like a habit stack, put this on top of it and, and develop this, develop this side of things. How the, how's the tech side going with that Meredith? The tech side is improved from where it was. Um, so we had some hiccups with, with our beta testing and just where the website sort of was when that started and, mid-October and I wasn't happy with it. Um, I let our web developers know I was really unhappy and I was I was also like fully prepared to pull the trigger on a backup solution at that point. Um, but they got it together. So we, we made the decision to go with a web-based like WordPress website for the fitness program. Um, fully custom code. It, it looks and runs a lot like an app when it's on your phone and like with Apple and I think Android too, you can bookmark web yeah. pages on your home, screen, on your home so screen you just click on it it's just so like an app mm -hmm. yeah um so the tech the, the tech side of it's really good and it's it's running the way that it should and it it keeps the cost down because wordpress sites are they're not very expensive and aside from the design and the work mm -hmm. up front they're way cheaper than than partnering with a third-party app like sugar wad yep. where you, we would end up spending like thousands of dollars a month just as you, because that's how they With get the you, users, right? The more yeah. clients you put exactly. on the platform, the more they charge. Like it's a dollar WordPress. person. Heaven yeah. Forbid, you actually like have it, an audience. It doesn't, right. Like, yeah. It doesn't actually cost any more to host people. So this allows us to, to pocket more of the income and just start sort of building a budget to eventually build our own app versus just, it's essentially like and nothing against paying rent because a lot of people rent houses. But it's essentially like renting a house. Like it would make it very difficult for us to save money to invest in the yeah. business if we're just our overhead with it's that app high. usage is really totally. high. That's a that's an expensive line item if, if mm -hmm. you're going that way, for sure, for sure. Alex, coming over to you, I actually want to dive into the running because like you're fucking all in, and I'm like, wow, look at this chick. What are the goals? Why are we doing all of this? How's your body feeling? Tell me all the things. Um, I actually feel great. Like every, with every marathon I, I run and I think I'm on my, I think I just ran my, was it fifth? Um, and over time, I think I ran one like 10 years ago and then I've run, uh, I guess five actually in the last few years. So like one every six or six months or so. And honestly, I've been running, I've been running every single year since that first marathon that I did in 2013 or th 2012, I just haven't been racing. And I just, yeah. I genuinely love running. I love being outside. I love just the monotony of it. I like how it helps me like think I struggle a little bit with anxiety and things like that and overthinking and second guessing. And I, when I go out for a run, it really helps me kind of sort through those thoughts. I really utilized it a lot when I was in law school that really, really helped me kind of manage everything that I had going on. And I think 
as much as people kind of poo poo cardio or running for building strength, and it does to some degree, I think it gave me a really good fitness base for when I started CrossFit. Um, and I continued running on my rest days and stuff just because I genuinely love it. But since kind of being a little bit more intentional about running training, and I still do CrossFit, I still, you know, try to maintain my strength for because I enjoy that part of, of it as well. Um, it's helped me, um, I don't know, just have a change. I think running was kind of the step out of cross competitive CrossFit. Mm -hmm. It was like, Hey, I'm actually doing something else. I'm not just going to start running more. Like I'm actually going to train for a marathon. And then you start setting little time goals and things like that. And I just achieved the uh, like sub three hours yeah, in man. Philly a That's month ago. Awesome. And <laughs> to me, I'm just, I crossed, I remember crossing the finish line and saying to Meredith, like, it wasn't even hard. Like it, it was because it was really like three and a half years of very intentional training. And it was never the goal when I started, it just kind of became the goal because I started getting closer to it. But when I ran the race, I was in such good shape just because I, I mean, I don't think I missed one running session except for two Christmases ago when we were staying on the mountain for a ski trip and I couldn't run cause it had dumped and it was like minus 30. Um, but other than that, I've hit every training session. So it's, it really just kind of speaks to trusting the process and making sure that you're in love with what you're doing, which I truly was. And as I started running more and sharing more on my social media, people were becoming more and more interested in it. And running is very inclusive and it's, it's easy for people to do. Yeah. I mean, you really just need a pair of running mm -hmm. shoes. <clears throat> and I, I remember running LA and I didn't have a great race. And I shared that on social media, some like a more emotional stuff. And people seem to really connect with that realism. And I had some free time after the marathon as I typically do, because I take a, a week or so off running and I like to keep busy. So I thought of, well, why not create a remote run club where I um, like program for people and do nutrition coaching and mindset training and have just people like build up to a, a race together. Um, because I've seen, you know, I worked with enough people who run just through my nutrition coaching, mm -hmm. coaching that, struggle to kind of stay committed to a long-term um, physical uh, a goal, like, like running a marathon or something. And I think a lot of it is not having the support that they need, not knowing how to adapt training plans and that sort of thing. And there was a lot of demand for it when I kind of asked the question of like, Hey, would this be something you're interested in? And so I launched it. I got a full, full group of 30 people. I learned very, very quickly how to program running. Um, and I mean, I have my own experience from running for the last three years, but I really had to look at, okay, what do, what do beginners need? Yeah. And I did a lot of research and, and I always think like, you know, there were moments where I'm like, Ooh, should I be doing this? Like, I don't have experience, but I find the fastest way to learn is to do. Mm -hmm. And I just, I took the time that it, and I made sure that I provided like, you know, well-researched, good quality yeah. programming. And then of course the nutrition part was fairly easy for me, but it's been something it's kind of been my baby within tactic. And I've really, um, just kind of fallen in love with working with people who not only have like nutrition based goals and health based goals, but also performance based goals. It just kind of, it takes some of the pressure off some of the aesthetic goals that people have and forces them to think about like, how's your body feeling? How are you performing? What makes you happy? Are you taking time for yourself? It's just like, it's just been really a really positive experience for me. And I think for a lot of the people who have been part of run club. It's been really cool to watch you do this. And I love that you you know you call it like it's your passion project, your baby within this. Because not that I feel that you're like super closed off or anything, Alex, but like I, I am more aware of what me what Meredith's like interests and passions are. And obviously you in the snow and doing your crazy downhill stuff. But to see you so engaged with this and to the point where you were like, I want to do this with other people. I was like, wow, that is really cool. My whole thing is like, I just want people to be happy. And I love when they're sharing their joy and expressing it. And so it was really cool to be like, to see you, one, just so committed to this thing, which that was not a surprise because that's both of you. That's your personality. And like, just she's going to do this thing. But then to be like, she loves this so much and is so, you know, excited by it and passionate about it that she wants to help other people do it and have this group for it. Like, that was really, really cool to see. So I'm glad that that has... Uh, you know, it proved it panned out well as well because it could go could have gone the other way. But mm -hmm. that's awesome. So the the plan is to continue with like, how did it work? You did 30 people it was like a cohort. Like, how did it work? I don't. Yeah, it's all group based. So um, so there was an individual aspect because it were, were people from all over the world. There were some people in Europe that were part of it. And 
basically you're one-on-one with me with for weekly nutrition coaching and weekly run programming. So you get your runs delivered to you each week. You provide feedback. I give you your next week of runs. So it's not just like, wow. here's 12 weeks of training, yeah, like yeah. follow the program. It's like very, I'm like keeping, I'm on my He's toes. Cool. Like, okay, somebody didn't run all week cause they're sick. Like, I'm not going to just give them the next week. Like I'm going to build them or like bring intensity down. Like I'm very like yeah. in tune with what's going on with them so that they feel like everything is doable and it keeps them engaged. Um, and then the group aspect is I had everyone join a Strava group. Mm-hmm. So they were able to see what other people were doing and just, it's not even like, I think a lot of people avoid Strava, like Instagram, you're, you know, a lot of people fall into the comparison yeah. trap where it's mm-hmm. like, oh, this person's running 20 K today. And I only ran five. Like, oh, I suck at running. It was more like, let's use this as a way to like encourage people. And like, I've used Strava for a while now. And I really like it when people give me kudos, like how many kudos did I get? And you know, you get more kudos for longer runs or faster runs, of course, but like, it's just kind of nice. Oh, people, you know, are seeing what I'm doing. And especially for someone like me, who's, I prefer to run by myself but I also like having support and, and then there's a group discord chat. So you're on discord and you're, there's a bunch of different channels. Um, did Meredith introduce you to discord? You knew what discord was? I didn't, but she introduced me and I'm like, Oh gosh, I have to learn a new (laughs) app, but it wasn't hard. I managed it. And, um, yeah, there's a bunch of, there's like a nutrition channel where we talk about, you know, sometimes I'll say like, okay guys, like, you know, for this week, let's have a challenge. Like everyone make a new recipe from tactic eats, which is our nutrition recipe page, post a photo and like, I'll do a random draw. And the person gets the shoes of their shoes of their choice. I'll send them to you. Um, and little things like that. Um, you know, if everyone participates in today's, uh, like reflection, like what was a great part of your week, they get into a random draw. So there's a lot of, you still need to like encourage some group group communication, but and then every month, and then for this new iteration, it's every two two weeks, there's a, a group Zoom call. And um, those have been great. I think especially now that a lot of people have met each other in Philly in person, the Zoom calls were a little bit more connected. Yeah. And it's That's just cool. really nice to kind of sit down. And I think a lot of us are busy and we maybe don't see other people quite as often as maybe we'd like in person. So the group, the Zoom chat is kind of like a nice way to just connect with other people and something that we all have in common, which is running. And it doesn't matter what level you're at. Everyone can talk about running and running shoes and things in life that make training hard and whatever it may be. So I love there's this. like a group aspect and the individual aspect. Folks listening, if we take it to the business side for a second, you can run your programs however you want. Um, the big thing there is obviously bringing expertise. That goes without saying, like you have to be able to get people a result. But in terms of why people stay and they come back and they tell other people about it is like, what kind of environment are you cultivating? What kind of culture are you, are you cultivating there? And then you can, the actual deliverables and, and how it's set up, you get to choose. I knew as soon as you said Discord, I was like, that's Meredith. There's no <laughs> way. Me. Alex did no pleated pants. There's no way that she was figuring out Discord. Meredith, where did the energy go? You were competing. High level, both of you. Alex went kind of down the, not kind of, ran the fuck way down the running path. Where did that passion go for you? Where'd you move it into? Um, content. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I mean, I still, I still train a lot. I was, I was running there for a bit too, more like the half marathon distance, uh, before my foot thing, foot which fell is, off. and then you stretched and it was better. Yeah, it's like crazy. Stretch your calves, Jesus. <laughs> um, that's literally it. <laughs> But yeah, I, I kind of took, um, number one, I really like technology. I really like cameras. And when Instagram made that really aggressive switch towards like video yeah, content, yeah. I was like, game on. And that was, yeah, that was when I, I started getting really into content creation and storytelling and connecting. And, you know, for me, even personally, it's been a lot of work to refined delivery and the way that I speak on camera and the way that I connect with people. Um, and just like practicing. I mean, it's, it's crazy how much of my time when I'm like in the shower or I'm driving, I'm just thinking about content yeah. and, you know, thinking about, okay, I saw this post or, you know, I watched, we were watching a documentary and there was this line and I'm like, Ooh, that line is a post. And it's like, okay, what do I want to say? How do I want to film it? Um, so that's, that's where a lot of my, competitiveness went I love that you know I love that it'd be I'd be hitting Meredith up and then I'm like you should buy that thing whatever it is you should buy that thing and yeah Alex will still love you you should buy mm-hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, Alex just let me buy a six thousand dollar computer, so she must. What love did me. you get? What? What? Yeah, I I have a MacBook Pro, but it's from like 2020, 2019, and it's got the old Intel chip. Wait, in it. it's you're right editing all this stuff on a MacBook? Yeah. Are your eyes okay? Oh yeah, you mean because of the screen? It's a big one. It's the sixteen inch. That's tight. Get... Six. That's it. Yeah. She did. You did get a a desk like a desktop screen that you used one time. Oh no, I the I got a screen for like our office. That's a full size. Okay, I was like, wait, thing. what? Okay. Yeah, so I use that sometimes, but um, no, I got this this Mac, and it it was the last Mac they made they made without their M series chips. Mm-hmm. And literally, like three months after I bought this thing, they rolled out the M one chip. And you were like, and so Adobe's just been upping their software demand or their hardware demands, and it it can do it. But I do so much video editing now for the totally. fitness program that my whole life is just watching videos render and waiting for them to export. So I upgraded to the M3 Max, uh, new MacBook that just came out, like top of the line. Have you, it's did you get it? It's in Calgary right okay. now. I, yeah, I had it, it got delivered this week. Alex is going to bring it back when she goes, but I, I had it delivered to Alberta to save like a lot of money on taxes. <laughs> Why does that change? Uh, cause it, the tax rate in BC is higher. Oh. So if I ordered something to our address here, it would just get dinged with like $600 of taxes that I don't have to pay if it goes to Calgary. Wow. BC stands for bring cash. That's Damn. what BC stands for. I had no idea. I had mm-hmm. no idea. I had no idea. With that and all the, um, the, the tech and the storytelling, how we, we talked about this a little bit on the last episode, but what does that look like from like the business side of things? And is that like what you've really doubled down on and leaned into for what you're bringing to the business and wanting to do? It's done a lot. I mean, it's our main funnel is Instagram and content. Um, so number one, it really helps with coaching <laughs> like our, our one-on-one clients. It helps when you can, especially with challenging topics, when you can put it out there into the ether and to the internet, um, without and they they get the message without you having to be like this is for you so it helps with coaching i think it helps people connect with us on a level that maybe other coaches and other companies don't get so there's a little bit of a parasocial connection that goes on with not only our clients but with people generally online um, which is really helpful it there's a lot of buy-in like i would say that our our following is pretty engaged compared to um a lot of other pages and people with similar um like follower counts so for us it's kind of like you know and again i'm not trying to get into people's pockets Mm -hmm. i don't i'm not going to do paid content that's not what we're into but it's about how to again like listening to the people who are there and providing solutions for them so Again, that's kind of where the fitness thing came from. It really helps with our signups for nutrition coaching, you know, and then long term, maybe we spin off um, some paid podcasts or something like that. Like, I, I think that we'll explore some other opportunities to just provide more connection opportunities with people. Um, but yeah, it's 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 certainly building the base. It's just a matter of, you know, what what f- switches do we want to flip? down the road as far as business development goes. That's a good place to be. Mm -hmm. What would you say, Meredith, to folks that say, think, believe that people don't consume longer content? Oh, you're just not making the right long content. I mean, that's, you know, we're kind of, I, I, so many times we'll, we'll set out to make a 90 second video, which is still long Mm -hmm. and it ends up being three minutes. And people just, they'll watch it, the whole thing. And I can look on insights and I can see when people navigate off the video and they're watching the whole thing. So it's really, if you're connecting with people and you're doing a good job with information delivery and you're engaging, they'll stay and watch. Like it's not the duration of the video that they're not interested in. It's the video. Period. She said it. Alex, you agree? Yeah, I was not yawning because she's boring. <laughs> Hopefully you folks are watching this on YouTube and you would have seen that and then saw why I asked that. <laughs> I, I'm cognizant of the time. I'm going to wrap this up. But the whole thing, the whole reason 
that I originally wanted to bring you on. One is because this is our annual thing, but like I said in the beginning, it is really inspiring to see people not just building or thinking about their best life, but actually having the courage to live it and having the wherewithal and, and taking a moment to actually live it. Anything that either of you would like to add, uh, maybe just to the reality of what that looks like, how long that takes, the decisions that have to be made, the no's maybe that have to be said in order to get to a place where, because you moved, you've left, well, Meredith, you left the United States. You were like, fuck that place. I did do that. <laughs> you know, you you moved away from, from Calgary. I'm sure you said no to opportunities. Like your time spending to grow this thing means that some of this falls to the way said, actually, Meredith, you just did a story, a story post, maybe as a post on your page about this mm -hmm. and, and training, how training switched and now it's switching back. Anything that either of you want to say, chime in about the reality of actually living and leaning into whatever your best life looks like? Uh, I'll say something. I, I had a conversation with a client today and it's Thursday. We usually do check-ins on Friday, but I, it's snowing a lot here. And I'm, I'm like, you know what, let's work today and then go skiing tomorrow. Okay. And like, all of my clients are down for that. So I just texted them today and told them, let's do a check-in today. And um, I was talking to one person and she said, I, I totally am down with that. She's a lawyer. And she was talking about how, you know, this week's been hard for her because with the holidays, some people are trying to need her a little bit more of her time. And she's like, geez, don't these people know that I'm a professional biker, which is a joke. But like, I'm like, I, I get it. I know. Right. And she's like, I guess, you know, I've just, I'm getting, I, I'm used to having the fle like flexibility. And she goes, I'm just lucky. And I was like, that's not luck. Yeah. You've, you've made that you're, you've created that flexibility and that balance in your life, especially like in somebody in your field of work, like lawyers don't typically mm -hmm. have a lot bad. of balance from my experience bad. Yeah, Big and not that many people actually do. And she's worked for it. And, you know, she said, you know, you're right. Like I, I actually passed up getting hired. I got passed up for getting hired as partner back when I, you know, wanted to spend more time with my child. And like, I wouldn't change that at all. And she's, you know, she's in a good place now. She's one of the happiest lawyers that I know. Um, and she still loves her work, but she has a good life balance and that she's happy with. And I think, I think my big takeaway, and this is something I've learned is like, you actually are a, like very much in control of what your life looks like. I think a lot of people instead, like they, they complain a lot about the situations that they're in or that the way that their work is or the way that their life is. And I think that a lot of people think, and maybe some people have a little bit more flexibility. I, for me, like I was able to kind of jump into nutrition coaching and start a business because I had my experience with CrossFit and the following and the attention there. And I had Meredith and, but I think a lot of people have more control and more um, ability to change their circumstances than they necessarily think. And it's just about like staying curious, like asking the questions, exploring rather than just complaining about the situation that they're in. Yes. That's my, my, Bad. my take. Bad. Meredith. Yeah, I think. Actually, can I jump in real quick before? Yeah. I love that. I love everything you said. And I will add, because I feel like when I do anything on social media, I'm like, what might somebody say? Because everybody's got some fucking thing. That's mm -hmm. something. Oh, but what about? And then, but what about? It's never even about them. It's about some other person. Oh, but what about? If you're listening to this podcast, if you have the wherewithal, the time, the ability, the technology, to listen to this podcast episode, you have exactly what Alex is saying. You have the ability to control more of your life than you think. And you are in control of more than your life than you think. I know that people immediately want to jump to like worst case scenarios where people like really don't have any say in their life. They're not listening to this fucking podcast. I guarantee it. Those people that are in those fucking horrendous situations, they don't, they don't have... They're not listening to this, right? We are talking to you. If you're able to listen to this, you are in a very good way. If you have the ability, you have a phone, you have the internet, you have headphones, whatever, how the fuck you know, you're driving somewhere, even if you're driving to a shitty fucking job, you have exactly what Alex is talking about, which is a great thing. You have the opportunity to change your circumstances and it may take a million years, it may be really fucking hard, but you do. So I wanna throw that out there because I know someone's like, but what about? We're not talking to those people. They're not fucking listening anyway. 
yeah. And I think there's comfort, you know, there are people that we work with and I've been there where there are, there are things that you can't change. Um, and there are going to be really tough times in your life. You know, I think about some people with young children who just struggle because having kids is really hard and it, you can't just give your kids away. You, <laughs> some people can't just hire a nanny. Like it's just going to be really hard, but there's comfort in knowing that like that will end, you know, it will change. And there might be ways that you can adapt or, um, yeah, I'm not saying that everything should, anything negative in your life should be changed, but no. for the most part, like if you look at the big picture, if you make small changes or even think about what could be different in the future, that can be enough to kind of, um, kind of change your perspective. I like Meredith has talked about too, like there can be negative aspects in your life. So maybe that means that you need to find something really fulfilling outside of that part of your life. Um, if your job really sucks and that you just, it's not something that you can change right now for financial reasons, like find something else that brings you a lot of happiness and that can help. And just like, you know, lean on to lean on that, on those really hard days. 100%. 100%. Give it to me, Meredith. I see you looking. Um, yeah, I think most people don't do a good enough job protecting their free time. And either that's their free time to to do the things that they want to do and that make them happy or using that free time to increase their potential as a human being, whether that's earning potential with business or athletic potential or training, if that's kind of what they're interested in. But it's like people are way too liberal with the things that they say yes to. And that also includes saying yes to like dicking around on your phone or on Netflix when you can say to yourself, no. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something that adds more value to me as a human being. Um, and I'm going to like break some unhelpful patterns. Like it, it's really like it's say, say no a lot more often than you say yes. And that makes your yeses mean a lot more. And it increases the amount of time that you have in your day to do the things that you want to do or um, learn how to make more money, which is what a lot of people want. And because that's the thing, right? If you if you're if you want more money in your bank account, so you ha you have more free time and you can buy a second house or do whatever it is that's going to make you happy, like you don't need to save more money. You don't need to buy more things. You need to take the money that you make to buy yourself more free time or reinvest in that feedback loop somewhere to increase the potential that you have to grow your bank account even more. Most people just like they don't do that. They just they bitch and complain about what they don't have while scrolling on Instagram or TikTok and making themselves feel sad. Well, that's your fault. I love it. You heard you, it here, folks. You, exactly. You, you folks <laughs> listening and watching, you see why I bring them on. It's just so much. Yes, I feel like you know. I I am on Instagram. I'm watching what people are doing, and sometimes I'll just you know text Meredith to bitch about things. <laughs> but I feel as though we've entered a time where. It's like full of caveats and full of excuses. And if you if you take a firm stance on something, if you take a direct stance, you take a direct approach, you speak directly, it's a problem. And I'm like, this sucks. Uh, there's yeah. a guy, Stu, Stu Brower. He's he is abrasive, but I enjoy listening because he'll just fucking say it, and you're just like, yes, you're just fucking saying the thing that we're all thinking. Like he most recently he was talking about um, the price increases for CrossFit for the affiliates, and it's just like this is very simple math, folks. Like CrossFit needs to fucking increase it. How they did it maybe wasn't the best, but like if you ever run a business, you understand that the fact that they said they were never going to increase this thing and it was at like one dollar for people, mm -hmm. that's a fucking expensive. That's a big loss there. And then they're then in terms of the people that they've brought on and the people that they're hiring, like people are like, oh, of course you should be able to turn a profit. And it's like this undertaking is massive. There's a lot of money going out. So yeah. if your company is not able to absorb fifteen hundred dollars a year, which actually wasn't fifteen hundred dollars for a lot of people, because a lot of affiliates are at more like twenty six hundred dollars, thirty six hundred dollars a year. If your affiliate is not able to absorb that, you have a bigger problem. You have a, mm -hmm. a business problem going on here. I am not saying that how they did it and being like, it's Christmas, pay us more money. Not saying that's the best, but in terms of like running a business and this needs to be done. And so the long and short of that is that Sue was just like, stop fucking whining all of you people. If you can't afford this, like you have financial problems and like, here's what we need to be doing. And I was like, yeah. yes. Great. I mean, like no one would complain if your business insurance went up $1,500 a year, do you think that people would complain about it? They would just say, oh, well, 
you know, I guess inflation, the price that's of things it. are going up. That's just it. the cost. That's what it costs. But the fact that it's CrossFit HQ that people have such a problem with, like they just look to complain about it. Then everybody gets their panties in a wad. I'm like, this, look, you can choose to not react. You can this. choose to not have an opinion on this. People don't choose that enough. Never. That's not an option, Meredith. What are you talking about? <laughs> 2023. You have to have an opinion on everything. <laughs> and then put it in the comments. And mm -hmm. then I go and read it because I know Meredith's going to respond and it's how I spend my day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, my resolution for 2024 is to do a little bit less of that. Although it is sort of part of our brand. It is. It is. I mean, I support either whether you do more or do less either one it has I'll been just... all of it is just so you too as a couple as a business as a brand continues to be so refreshing and what down to like you know where they're talking about the fact that you're like yeah we're gonna put out this video and it's three minutes and like it's fucking good we're gonna challenge what the what's commonly stated out there uh we're going to actually speak the language and validate what people are saying and not just be like we need to be right I, like there's just so much that goes into the, your brand that is refreshing and I will forever support it and will forever wear my my tactic sweatshirts and not wash them inside out because I'm like but the fuzzy stuff is on the inside it's good <laughs> I don't want to take it off don't do it <laughs> if you folks listening are somehow not familiar with them all of the stuff is going to be in the show notes I'm not going to ask Alex for her Instagram handle because I don't know if she knows it Still, I don't know I don't know <laughs> she like, it's at Alex <laughs> I, why does anyone need to know their own handle? I mean, because someone's going to ask. It's like your name, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. All of the stuff will be in the show notes. If you're watching on YouTube, it'll be below whatever that little place is called. Uh, we will link Meredith's uh, Instagram. We'll link Alex's. We will link Tactic. We'll put the um, website. All the things will be in there. Thank you, Courtney. Before I let you two go, is there anything that either of you would like to share with the people leave us with as we head into the new year? I don't think so. Just make it a happy one. And f what that means is like, find your own happiness and commit to it. Alex. She said it. <laughs> <laughs> you are the best Meredith, Alex, as always. So, so grateful that you take the time, you figure out the technology, you have the discussions <laughs> with each other so that we can do this. It's always a pleasure. You folks listening. We know you could have been doing anything and you chose to listen to us. And for that, we are all endlessly, endlessly appreciative. I didn't bring up the kids this time, but I know that Rue and New Mel and Ivy, of course, Queen Ivy, they are also. Are they around, though? Are they like? Queen? I'm petting Ivy right now. Oh She's gosh. down on the floor. What she just wandered life. up. What a life. They are all yeah. appreciative. Rupert doesn't give a fuck. I'm not going to lie. And Moose <laughs> just whispers she could be near us. Wait, I'll bring Ivy up. Let me see Let's Ivy. See her. Come here, Lulu. There she is. There she is. She's just so elite. Just yeah. come on. That's look at that face. <laughs> That's she's the like most elite pet. Look at that. She's <laughs> like I charge by the second for cameos. <laughs> so this is getting expensive for you quickly. Can you hear that? Is she purring? Twenty twenty four. Let's do some interviews with with Ivy. All right, Meredith, get on that. Get the tiny she's ready mic. for it. I'll get, get, get it. I'll get a little mini mic. Here you That's go. It. She like swears a lot, so just be prepared. <laughs> I love it. You folks listening, as always, endlessly, endlessly appreciative. All of the things will be in the show notes. And I do believe that is all that we have for you today. Like Meredith said, like Alex said, as we head into the new year, let's bring some joy. What joy? Your joy. Borrowed goals ain't the way. All right, all right, all right. All right, folks, that's all we got for you for today. Until next time, friends, Ivy, Rue, Mel, Moose. Maestro, Alex, and Meredith, out.